How's it going, guys? It's Z Slayer Diego's here, and uh, I know what the title's probably implying, like, oh, I'm gonna choose a favorite, and someone's gonna be pissy down in the comments below, but no, I'm just gonna tell you uh, the difference between uh, Friday the 13th and uh, Dead by Daylight, what they do good, what they could improve on, and overall what um, what I enjoy playing in both of them, because um, about a week ago, I would have to easily say I loved um, Dead by Daylight way more than Friday, because I never really gave it a chance. But this last week, I've actually been playing some. You even saw my first uh, Friday the 13th uh, montage that I posted, which was actually really fun to do. I really enjoyed uh, making it like I do in my Dead by Daylight videos. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy my uh, little comparison be between the two. And let's get right into it. First, we're going to start off with Dead by Daylight, since it did actually come out first. Um... What Dead by Daylight offers in its main menu is news on recent updates or events that are coming up for the game and just stuff like that. Right now it's actually the um, blood hunt where you accumulate more blood points up until the 2nd of January. And as you can see they still have their little Christmas design on which I really like that the devs put in. If they put snow on the actual maps, which they didn't, it would have been a little cooler but regardless they gave it some thought. Next you got survive with friends in Friday. Uh, it's just co-creating a party and then you can just hop right into a game. Uh, survive with friends you are put into a lobby with your friends and then you could join an actual lobby with a random killer so you get points for doing this uh, these are the individual roles unlike Friday um, you get to actually choose it's not a preference it's more like you either or survivor or killer next you got kill your friends which is just a fun room per se you just hook up with a bunch of friends one of you takes the role of the killer the rest survivors you get any perks any items anything and you just go with it you have fun with it and it's a really nice way to either practice or just have fun with friends and lastly daily rituals which you can see these will get you um more blood points to spend in the blood web which i will talk more about in a little bit hello sorry my mic was disconnected for a sec so Going to Friday the 13th, which was the game that came out after Dead by Daylight, by, I believe, a month or two after? I'm not 100% sure, but... So, here's the loading screen. Nothing too special. You just hear the ominous... And, um, that's really it, and that, that gets a little annoying after a while, in all honesty. I mean, it's nothing good. I mean, they didn't do anything special for Christmas or anything like that, but, um... Let's go into the main menu and see. So, uh, in the main menu, you got quick play, it just puts you right into a game automatically. You got a private match. Um, you got offline mode, which they added to just play as Jason against the counselors. One thing I have a problem with that is the fact that you get XP from doing that. You get XP for killing nobody, for not doing anything except that and that seems like a really cheap way to progress and it's just really dumb how to play teaches you all the different mechanics and stuff because there's a lot of stuff you really really ought to look into you got the customization here let's go into that real quick you got your counselors now one thing friday does really really well is the different stats for each counselor each counselor can either repair stuff faster can run faster can um, defend themselves better just different stuff like that another thing that I want to say I don't like is the fact that some of the counselors are locked when you when you start and I think that's dumb why not just have them all unlocked you get to choose your preference based on how you want to play but now you actually have to grind out to unlock the survivors which isn't too bad but I mean come on I'd rather just get into the game instead of having to go and have to unlock all these different counselors now with the counselors also, their perks are shared regardless. You roll here, you just pick a perk, and you just stick with what you want. But like I said from Dead by Daylight, you only have three in here, whereas Dead by Daylight has four. But some of these you start with items, some of them they increase your running. This one I have here, uh, break free from gr Jason's grasp easier. And just different stuff that can affect how you play and what you want to do. Your clothes, um, you can change the outfits, but the thing that I have a problem with the outfits is that you actually have to purchase them. 
And as you can see, I mean, I don't have a actual problem. I can buy them, but the fact is that there's nothing really spectacular to buy for Friday as add-ons. You just get either different outfits or different kills as Jason, and that's it. You also have the emote pack, of course, but I mean, that's okay. It's not, not the worst thing. Yeah. All right, so for, uh, we'll talk with survivors in Dead by Daylight. Now, I also forgot to mention this. I really love the music because they play different music per survivor and killer um, in the normal updates, but now they have this really ominous uh, bell tones for the Christmas update, which I really like. It's a nice little touch. Now, for survivors, you got all these different survivors. They each have different perks that you can do and different... That's pretty much it with the survivors. I mean, there's nothing really special about them except their individual perks. And with the perks, you have to unlock those. You have to get to a certain level, unlock them, and then you can give them to other characters, which is kind of a pain, in all honesty. You kind of have to grind out one character in order to get the rest, which is a bit of a pain. But what is nice that they offer, as you can see, they offer different clothing that you can unlock once you reach a certain level. So you got, like, all the bloody outfits and... It's based on your prestige, but again, this is a bit of a grind and it's a little bit of a hassle, but in the end, it's pretty cool. I mean, it shows that you actually are good at this game, you know what you're doing. The next one is the loadout. Now, this is where you can put in the perks that you want. You can have four in Dead by Daylight as opposed to Friday, where you only have three, but regardless, it's a bunch of different ones. Some are open right away, like this isn't happening where you just start out with them and you can find them but other ones like uh, for example self-care you can heal yourself without a med kit um, those have to be unlocked via other characters like I showed you earlier now items you can start off with items and it, you don't need a perk to do this you can just have different items maps track exits locks the generators anything you need to do toolboxes either sabotage hooks or repair generators faster keys unlock black locks which is the hatch or see auras of survivors or the killer flashlights can be used to blind the killer and of course med kits can heal you way faster and lastly we have offerings which can change the game in different ways some will give you more points like bloody party streamers others will decrease the amount of hooks like petrified wood your luck can increase which is um affects searching through chests as well as escaping the hook or you can change the fog you can change the moonlight or you can start with your friends together and just a bunch of different stuff it also depends on where you start the host does not get to choose it's more like random unless you put in an offering tipping the odds towards that specific spot next we got the blood web this is how you level up your character because that's the thing in this game you don't really have because um, you have your survivor rank which is based on how good you do what you do in the game there are four different categories that imply to this and that's mostly what love levels you up the lower your level the better you are but your actual survivor level is determined by the blood web and the blood web will change from character to character based on how much you've done like for example Quentin here he's only a level one so it's really small whereas you saw with David it was really high Next we have the shrine, and here this is actually a interesting thing you can do where um, if you don't want to grind out you can try and wait for the shrine to have a perk you want and you get these things. I don't really know what they're called, I, I call them blood shards because that just sounds cool. And you get to, um, you get to uh, just choose perks to unlock, like for example, um, do I even have any of these? Nope, I already have all of these, but like it shows right there. Um, if you already own, you can buy it again for 200,000 blood points. So that's a really nice touch that they added. So you, it's not just wasted if you get all the perks unlocked. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. And um, from here, you can change your settings, your daily rituals, or you can also change to the killer. But we'll get back to that in a second. Now, in Friday the 13th, um, all you're really stuck with is... Jason, you can only change the Jasons you want. Each Jason has different abilities that um, tip on how you want to play the game. But overall, they have relatively the same abilities. Just some are more enhanced than others. And you also have the uh, grab kills, which aren't as spectacular as in Dead by Daylight. Because you have to... Um, in Dead by Daylight, you do a certain thing. Whereas in Friday the, Friday the 13th, you just get them once you grab the counselor. You can just grab the counselor and you can um, 
kill them just on how you want, and you can change that for all the Jasons you have. But here also, you have the preferences, which I don't like because it's more like a roll of the dice on who you're going to get to play as. If you like playing as Jason, there's a small chance you're not going to get to play as him. Whereas, oh, I like playing as counselors. Well, everyone else who is in the game prefers counselors, so I'm stuck with Jason, even though I suck as Jason. So that's not really the best way of going about it. I mean, there's nothing really that I like about the spawn preference, this isn't really the best way of choosing who you want to play as. I mean, if you don't care, that's fine, but I mean, at least give me the option on who I want to play as. Right, now onto the killers of Dead by Daylight. Now, what I think Dead by Daylight does really well is it spreads out powers and abilities to the killers really, really well. Like, for example, um teleportation like in Friday where you can do what Jason the nurse can do that it's called a blink you can blink to different locations and hit survivors or grab them or whatever or there's other ones where the wraith he can turn invisible the trapper can set traps to buy generators exit gates anything like that or you can go with a more uh, brutal approach like the hillbilly he can chainsaw sprint across the map hitting people with his chainsaw puts them in the dying state instantly or the Huntress where um, she could throw hatchets and if you have a certain add-on you can um, in a sense put them into the dying state as well now here we'll go with the Huntress for now see because this is the other thing that I want to show you guys is that if you, a killer is not high enough level or survivor whichever th they don't get their perk slots you have to actually level up to do that which I think is a little dumb but at the same time it's kind of a way so that you can level up you can get more perks and then you could just put them in so i think it, that balances it really well the add-ons are a little different for killers though because with the um power it's a set power there's nothing you could change about that but the add-ons you can change so they that are like for example the huntress mildly decreases hatchet reload time at a locker or the hatchet will deal a certain type of um, hindrance to the survivors when hit with a hatchet and the offerings are also a little different I mean you have still same stuff that increases the blood points you get but you also have stuff that separates the survivors or you have these things called moris what a mori does is it allows you to kill the survivor by your own hand which is basically the execution moves in Friday the 13th and Dead by Daylight does this really well because it's not a regular thing. When you get to do this, it's like, whoa, that was awesome. I love doing that. Versus in Friday, it's like, okay, yeah, I've killed you. On to the next one. But there's not as much score, so that's kind of a little bit of a downside to it. But other than that, it's really, really cool. The Blood Web is essentially the same. You get your add-ons. You get your different offerings and perks and stuff in the Blood Web for the killers. The shrine, it stays the same for everyone. The shrine will never change until it ex until it refreshes. Now you can customize also for uh, the hollow for the Halloween for the Christmas update. They did add uh, frosty eyes, which I really think is really cool. They only added it for their killers, I like to call them, which is the killers that they essentially came up with. They did not add it for Freddy. Michael Myers or Leatherface and that's another thing I want to say the fact that they added these guys with different abilities and stuff that's really cool I really really like that and uh, yeah so customization some you can customize the weapon their outfit or their uh, head which is cool but yeah so that's what the killers are in Dead by Daylight now one last thing I want to just go into offline mode just to show you Jason gameplay so I don't have to wait for a match in um, quick play to play as Jason but um, you can also do the virtual cabin which you can walk around the cabin look at different Easter eggs and stuff like that which is very fun but let's go into offline mode here you can just choose um, any map you want any Jason that you have unlocked stuff like that I'll um I think I'll go with a different Jason because I'm gonna set it to an easier mode so it might be more exciting to do this. Another thing that's cool is that the tips at the bottom, they actually show you not only ways to escape and stuff like that, but they also show you um, lore about the movies, like the budget it was on and everything. Now, this is another problem I have. You actually see which Jason is being played as.
there's not really much surprise to that, which I think is really a missed opportunity. I mean, I don't want to know what Jason I'm up against. I don't want to know what I'm dealing with until I see him. Because it's be more here, scary in that sort of way. And one less problem I have with this is the fact that you could kill Jason in this. And that, I think, is really, really stupid. Because why... How, how do you kill Jason? T tell me this. Jason could take gunshots and everything. But yet, the second his mother gets in the picture and Tommy Jarvis fucking hits him in the face with a machete. Oh, no. He's dead. It's like, oh, yeah. That's definitely how Jason Voorhees works. But also there, like you saw, you can have sensibilities, you can teleport around the map, and this is really, really overpowered. I mean, I get the map's big, but that's really the dev's fault. If they won, they either chose a giant map and a killer who has crazy superpowers, or you have a smaller map like Dead by Daylight with killers that have reasonable abilities. So it's not like, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous, I can't get away from this killer, he has all these different buffs, and I'm fucked as is. See, I mean, look, you can fucking teleport like fucking Nightcrawler around here. You see that? But another the Friday the 13th does, it ties in a fear factor. Like, um, if the lights go out, if you see Jason for too long, or you see the body of uh, another player, then that affects, like, how your sanity is going, and you can either see the map, or you can't see your stamina. It basically goes really, really dark. But as you can see, it's also not that difficult to actually beat them. bots. Find them. Kill them. See, I mean, you can also throw knives like, uh... The Huntress. Very nice gore factor. That's my special, special boy. Oh, hello. But there's also a bunch more stuff you can do, like, um... Like I said, with Jason, you're kind of dead if he finds you. I mean, he won't stop until either he kills you or he finds one other person to kill. So, you better pray that you bait him to one of your teammates or you jerk as fast as you can because with Jason I mean there's nothing you can do really once he gets to you oh hello perfect this lady will now demonstrate this That's my boy. hunt them down and make them pay like I said, if unless you have a teammate or a pocket knife near you, you're really, really dead if Jason finds you because there's nothing you can do. Like, let's see. Let's see, now that he's out of pocket knife, nothing really he can do now. Yes. Yes. Kill for mother. Now see, at the end of the match you got your who you've killed and you got this little cutscene at the end. Job well, and mommy is pleased. Come home, sweetie. <laughs> you got your what you've done throughout the match your total xp as well as how it um affects your level at the bottom just continue you got who you killed and how you killed them and it'll also say who escaped and um after that it just pops you right back to the main menu and that's it 
Okay now, so when you play as the killer in Dead by Daylight, you basically create the lobby yourself. You're pretty much the host. If you leave the match, then everyone else leaves too. No new killer joins in. So, once you're here, you just wait for survivors. You can have them pop up, but like I said, they don't know who you are. So, that's a nice little touch. And from here, you can edit your perks, your abilities, anything you want. Let's figure out what we want. In this case for me, I'm using the hillbilly, and his chainsaw will put survivors into the dying state instantly. Unless I have a certain add-on, which is this, but it, that's nothing really. Nothing too spectacular. But then once we're here, let's add in some bloody party streamers, and now we can- now we just have to wait. Okay, so while you're in the loading screen to be the killer, you kind of get these little pop-ups like, oh, um, crows in the level, if they're startled, they'll fly up, and that can tip you off to where a survivor might be hiding, and uh, just different stuff like that. There's nothing really too exciting to be read about it, it's just mostly stuff about the gameplay and other things like that, but uh, once you spawn in, you just have to get aware of your surroundings, and then you just go around looking for survivors. Okay, so now that we're in, basically it's just kind of straightforward on how you want to get rid of the survivors. You find them, you have to hit them twice, or in this case with the hillbilly I'm playing, as you just hit them once with your chainsaw, you put them down, and then you have to take them to a hook somewhere around the map. And um, you can look for scratch marks like you see there on the tree that will tip you off to where they've been running. That um, is similar to, Deb to Friday the 13th where you don't want to be running too much because Jason will hear you. But once you find a survivor, you hit them once and it will put them into the injured state. They'll be uh, bleeding and usually be very disoriented. And uh, once they're in the injured state, if you hit them again, they will be in the dying state. Like here, see, the chainsaw just put them into the dying state automatically. And uh, these generators are their means of escape, so damage the generators as you pass them by. And once the survivor's in the dying state, pick them up, go to these very festive looking hooks, and then just hook them up. After three hooks, or if the hook has, um, if the sacrifice has gone to the second mode, um, they'll be sacrificed and killed out of the game. By the end of the match, once either you've killed everyone or you've sacrificed everyone, you'll get your match results, you'll get to see where everyone's perks were at, you'll see what you did in terms of sacrificing, as well as the points you got in different categories. So, spawning in as a counselor... I they have to escape. You pretty much know what to expect. You know who Jason is. You know um, what Jason you're up against and just how to prepare yourself. For example, this Jason we're up against, he can run. So if I get close to him, I want to not do that. Good job. Good job, game. Another thing that you just noticed, because I it said fortified, but it didn't actually fortify the door, is that this game is way more buggy than Dead by Daylight. The devs don't, didn't do too good of a job making this stable. This game has crashed on me. I've taken fucking long-ass times to actually get into a match. And the wait sometimes isn't even worth it, because if Jason finds you first, then you're fucked. Another thing I'll say, because I actually muted the gameplay in this because I didn't want to mess with anyone else while I was doing this video, is that there's proximity chat in Friday, which allows you to plan out how, who, who ha can do what, what your different perks are, if you're in trouble, everyone can come rushing to help you, and just different stuff like that. And also, as you'll see here, is that you can also fight back against Jason by either shooting flare guns, shotguns, you can hit him with baseball bats, stuff like that. And, um, yeah, on the bottom left, you can see all the items I have. Healing spray, uh, firecrackers to distract Jason. The healing spray I don't like mainly because it's too easy to heal. It's nothing too exciting about that. It's like, oh, great, healing spray. Now I just heal up. I'm done. But uh, as you'll see here, um, once you see Jason, there's nothing you can do. I mean, you can't outrun him if he's this specific Jason. He'll just hack you to death. You can't heal yourself. And the wait that you probably went through, probably a good 15, 20 minutes waiting to get into a lobby, are just wasted. And now you just got to sit here and watch players, or you can leave, go to your next match. 
But uh, yeah, so both good and bad parts to playing as counselors in Friday. All right, so here I'm joining into a lobby. What I like about Dead by Daylight as opposed to Friday the 13th also is the fact that when you join a lobby, you join it like that. You There's no long waits. There's no, oh, the host has disconnected. That very rarely happens. But here you can edit everything. You can do your blood web and everything. And once you're all set, you can ready up. But the thing that stinks is you do have to wait for everyone to ready up, but what I do like about Dead by Daylight is the timer's way less. It provides less time for people to leave and all that, but the game won't start until you have four people, whereas Friday you have you can have like five and then you can start, but um, Dead by Daylight, it does really well with getting you straight into a match right away. There's no long waits, there's no nothing. You can get right into a match and not have to worry about it. So here we go it'll show you which map you're on but what is cool about this is you don't know who the killer is you have to just basically prepare for anything which is really really intense and scary in its in its thought because you don't know oh man is it the wraith is he invisible oh is it michael myers can he be right oh there's the wraith so then let's run away what i do like about this is the fact that uh you can, um, once you find the killer, you're not dead automatically. You're not dead. You can escape easier. You don't have to worry about it. But you can't really fight back. You can more only, um, just run, drop these pallets around the map. And that's really it. If you have a flashlight, you can blind them with that. Or you have these lockers around the map you can hide in and stuff like that. And uh, what's also nice is you get the heartbeat, which will increase faster and faster when the killer's approaching. But uh, going back to the skill checks, I also want to say that in Dead by Daylight, um, you only have the same one, L1. Whereas in Friday, just even a little change is great, which is um, they you can either have L1 or R1, which is really, really nice. Because it's you're not sure which one it's going to ask for whereas here. It's like, okay. Well just gotta do this and that's it What dead by daylight also lacks is proximity voice chat, which I really really found difficult to get used to once uh, ah. Which I really really found difficult to get used to because in uh, In Friday there isn't really um any problem with that you can get a walkie-talkie the killer can hear you talking and all that and it's really really interesting to do that whereas dead by daylight you can't work as a team and it's really difficult to actually form plans in order to stay alive but yeah and other than that a, a lot of people say that the map oh it's way bigger in uh Friday and it's like well, I mean there are more more maps. So I mean it's not really that big of a hindrance when you think about it Okay, so just a little a Little juking around this is nice too cuz I mean it shows that you can actually avoid the killer a lot better instead of having to worry about Jason just auto grabbing you and killing you but uh, see also with here that you'll see is that when you're um, hit twice, you're in the dying state, but that doesn't essentially mean that you're dead. That just means that, oh, I'm on the ground. He could pick me up and put me on a hook. And um, it makes it so that you're still in the game, whereas in Friday, if you're dead, you're dead. And it usually doesn't make the wait that worth it, whereas Dead by Daylight, you're, there's still a good chance that you'll still be in the game even when you get to this point where you're kind of just helpless on the ground. You just have to wait for either your teammates to come help you or you can have a perk that will get you up automatically but yeah so it definitely makes the uh waiting for the game way worth it okay and so here once you escape this is basically the game's over for you you can either leave or you can spectate anyone who's still left and once you're in this screen it'll show you everything you've done from left to right it'll show you uh your generators you've completed it'll show you um 
your survival points, how much you help your teammates, and uh, escaping the killer and being around them will also give you points. Now, with these, this will also show you um, how you level up, like, depending on uh, each little white tier you get there, they'll increase your level. And then at the end, oh, the killer left. We just got to wait for that to load up. But you can still look at all this. You can see the status if you were killed, sacrifice, or you escaped. You could see everyone's perks, the killer's perks, add-ons, anything like that. And you can also see the overall points that everyone acquired through this, which is also really nice to see. So lastly, I'm going to end this on the price, which I don't like comparing the games by their price or saying, oh, which is better or anything like that by the price. But just want to say uh, Dead by Daylight, the deluxe edition, which comes with all of their specific killers, gives you um, the doctor, the hag, uh, the nurse, everything, the huntress and all that. Uh, it's twenty nine ninety nine, whereas in uh, Friday the 13th, it's twenty nine ninety nine regardless. Or is it thirty nine ninety nine? I can't remember. But uh, what I like about Dead by Daylight is what you buy is killers and survivors. And each killer comes with their own corresponding survivor except Leatherface because he's just Leatherface. Whereas in Friday, all you buy is skins and kills for Jason. Which isn't that uh, much of something I want to really buy in the game. I'd rather buy content to play as whether just outfits. Hey guys, I'm glad you stuck with me this far into the video. I've never made a video this long, so you guys are probably like, Oh my god, Z, stop making long videos. Don't do this again. That's like, yeah, no, I don't want to make videos that you guys have to sit through a half hour of your life to, to watch. But um, I do hope you guys enjoyed this little comparison video. I've been wanting to make this for a while now, but I've just been trying to figure out everything. I've been trying to look at every aspect of the, the game, see, like, oh, what, uh, who does what good and who does what bad and everything in between but uh also i don't want to say that i really have a preference